I was at the uh, meeting in Bethesda in 2007 when they unveiled that guideline, avoid sugary drinks. And I went to the microphone and I said, there are sugary drinks and there are sugary drinks. You can drink a cola beverage, God forbid, or a fruit punch, which is probably glucose and high fructose corn syrup, or you can squeeze three oranges in the morning. <clears throat> and the response I got from the podium was energetically, they're all the same. That was it. I didn't really understand it until I had lunch with Robert Lustig, our pediatric endocrinologist who deals with obesity in children and points out very loudly the downside of sugar. And he told me that if you eat an orange, the fiber slows down the absorption of sugar into the bloodstream. But if you squeeze the sugar away from the fiber, it's like drinking a cola beverage. So why is that bad? When the body sees that sugar, it responds with insulin, an insulin-like growth factor, both of which promote inflammation and the growth factor, as I says, is a growth factor for cancer cells as well. So the average American consumes about 150 pounds of sugar or sugar uh, associated uh, condiments each year. Now, high fructose corn syrup has declined in uh, its appeal since we decided that it was not healthy at all, but still the amount of sugar consumed has not really changed. So what do we know about sugary drinks and cancer risk? Again, the French Nutrinet Santé study uh, looked at 100,000 participants and they evaluated consumption of sugary drinks, including 97 items with 100% fruit juice included, as well as artificially uh, sweetened items. In uh, their study, the 100% uh, fruit juices were the most frequently consumed uh, sugary beverage. And what they did was they found that the mean age in this cohort was quite young, 42 years, predominantly women, uh, hence the high number of uh, breast cancer cases, but also a significant number of prostate and colorectal cancer. And they found a positive association between sugary drink consumption and the overall cancer risk. So increased almost 20% for each 100 milliliter a day increase in consumption. And that was uh, statistically significant for breast cancer, both pre and post menopausal. There was in this study a positive association between 100% fruit juice, increasing the overall risk of cancer 12%. Interestingly, artificially sweetened beverages showed no increased risk of cancer. However, I daily, daily, daily see patients asking me if they should drink this sugary drink to cure their cancer. These are all exotic fruits that somebody somewhere put out in social media that they cured their cancer drinking this or that. I say, no, don't do that, eat blueberries. And in Australia, in fact, they rank food in the supermarket for the consumer. And they recently dropped orange juice from five stars to two stars, ranking it below diet cola, which I never would recommend that anybody drink, right? So switching to diet soft drinks. Again, the EPIC study with a half a million Europeans Again, predominantly women age 50 looked at uh, higher, found higher all cause mortality among participants who consumed two or more glasses a day of diet soft drinks compared to consumers of less than one glass a month. And that was for the total soft drinks, sugar sweetened tend to have deaths from digestive diseases, particularly uh, diabetes and artificially sweeter uh, drinkers had deaths from circulatory or cardiovascular disease. But again, going back to the French Nutrinet Santé study, which was uh, just recently published this year, uh, they adjusted for multiple confounding factors, comparing non-consumers of artificial sweeteners uh, to uh, those who did uh, consume them. And they found that aspartame and acyl sulfate K uh, increased the risk of cancer. Uh, higher risks observed, again, for breast cancer and obesity-related cancers, ironically, uh, the question of that may be reverse causality. They're obese, so they're drinking diet soft drinks, and the obesity caused the cancer, not the diet soft drink. Interestingly, they found no association with sucralose noted, but that's because very few of the people uh, in their study were consuming sucralose. 
So the investigators suggest that their findings that artificial sweeteners and excessive sugar intake may be equally associated with cancer risk. 